Murder. Sacrifice. And polygamy? Cults are weird. But when a false prophet beheaded me and sent me to the underworld, the only way to get my revenge was to start a cult of my own. I have 100 days to grow, extort, abuse, manipulate, and even marry my followers as I take everything they have for my own personal gain and comply with absurd requests to keep them happy. Judge me, but I've always wanted to eat a meal made of poop. Oh, no, 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 no. All in an effort to become powerful enough to destroy these false idols and reclaim my freedom. This is Cult of the Lamb, and I never thought it would be this fun to start a cult. Let's get into it. I was just a poor little lamb, bound by rope and forced down a long, narrow pathway by hooded tyrants wielding blades. I stepped over the skeletal remains of countless dead souls to reach these four hideous monsters who forced me to kneel to be sacrificed. They told me I was the last of a kind. All others they had hunted down. I was to be sacrificed to ensure a prophecy does not become fulfilled. These beasts were trying to preserve their old faith, a way of life that I must have not agreed with. Can't understand why else I'd be here about to get my head chopped off. I was sent to the underworld, or something. I was greeted by another one of these creatures named the One Who Waits. Looks like I was indeed dead, but apparently death is not the end. The ones who sacrificed me apparently were trying to keep me from the One Who Waits, but when they chopped my head off, it sent me straight to him. I'm not sure how they didn't think of that one ahead of time. The One Who Waits needed my help. Not usually one to trust a hideous creature in chains, but I was dead, so I didn't have a choice. I mean, I really did not have a choice. Well, wait, well, what if what if I want to say no? It wanted me to start a cult in his name. Wanting to appear eager, I said, absolutely. He gave me his red crown and commanded me to begin recruiting followers for the cult. I arose from the dead back into the world with a powerful red crown on my head and some new skills. It gave me a sword to test out my newfound abilities, and I sliced and diced and rolled around like a ninja to slay these misguided souls. I continued on my path forward and I was greeted by Ratu. He was a former chosen vessel like myself, but now he is here to guide me through the lands of the old faith. Apparently, a lot of danger lurks ahead, so I guess a guide will be helpful. I destroyed his camp hoping to collect some goods, but he had nothing for me, so I pressed on, slaughtering more unholy creatures and collecting new things like coin. And we always, always need coin. Further on the path, I came across another bound soul being ready to be sacrificed. Ratu showed up and told me to rescue him, and he will have no choice but to join my cult. Saving someone's life sounded like a good way to force someone to be indebted to me, so I slashed up some more enemies to save this sad little chicken. When I got to the end, it gave me a nice little breakdown of my efforts. Always nice to know how many people I murdered. Ratu gave me some land and a place to call home to begin growing my cult. First, I had to indoctrinate that poor little chicken who I just saved. Now that I basically owned him, I could do whatever I wanted to him. That includes changing his name and changing what he looked like and forcing him into whatever kind of labor I needed. I sent him off to chop some trees for me. Ratu informed me that prayer won't be enough to sustain my cult. I needed to feed them too, so I also got to work chopping trees and mining stone so that I could build myself a cooking fire. A hunger meter showed up and now I had to worry about that too. Let's just hope they're not picky eaters. I didn't start a cult to become a full-time cook. I gathered some berries nearby and cooked up my first meal, a berry bowl. Then I had to pass this really hard mini game. Oh, was that supposed to be that easy? And then Ratu instructed me to build my shrine. But first I needed more followers and more gold. To get those I had to go on crusades. He has opened a portal to the lands of the old faith and my task was to crusade through the lands and bring down the four bishops. That will set the one who waits free from his chains. It was time to begin my journey. I left Taijul to continue his deforestation as I set off on my first crusade. When I entered, I was given a weapon. The Crusaders Blade won. With nothing else except my adorable fleece of the lamb and three hearts, I stepped out into the lands of the Bishop Leshy. I slaughtered those who dared step in my path and quickly made my way through the forest until I reached Clownek. He gives these tarot cards, which can help me on my crusades. I selected the Lover's One for an additional heart and I continued on. This time my path led me through some various resources stone or what I could only assume was food. I chose the food because it doesn't matter if it's dinosaurs, 
pals, or cult followers. I always have trouble keeping things fed. I grabbed more berries and then headed into the final section. When I got to the last room, Leshy revealed himself and warned me. But of course, he was too cowardly to fight me right there and then, so we sent a follower to do his dirty work. I faced off against this abomination, Amdusius. He got some good licks in, but my super fast sword swipes and quick dodge rolls kept me alive long enough to slay this non-believer. He popped out of his monstrous cocoon and I approached him. He was a weird looking fella, horns and some kind of eggs on his head. Not sure what's going on there, but he was more harmless looking now and I needed followers, so I converted him. Meanwhile, I was pretty bloodied up myself, so I grabbed my rewards and headed home. When I got back, I put up my shrine, a place where my followers can pray, which allows me to collect devotion that I can use to unlock things to level up my base. Ratu gave me another follower to get started, and I put some of them to work to begin praying. Once I got my first devotion, I was able to upgrade and unlock the temple. I cooked up some more food and embarrassingly burnt it. I was joking before, but that minigame is just complicated enough you should probably pay attention. Anyway, I was informed that burnt food can cause my followers to get sick. So if I didn't clean it up, they would not be happy. So I took care of it. I built my temple and I began to learn the importance of it. First off, this is where I can hold sermons once per day. The sermons build faith for my followers and keeps my faith meter high. It also draws power from them, allowing me to level up and unlock new abilities, weapons, and curses. I preached my first sermon, and I unlocked my first level up. Ratu told me about doctrines, but before I could assign any of those from my temple, I needed to crusade more and collect some stone fragments. I gathered some more devotion and unlocked a farm plot next, but resources were pretty low, so it was time to crusade again back into Darkwood. I was given a different weapon this time. Apparently I don't get to choose my weapons, so let's hope RNG is on my side. Ratu showed up again before I continued and he gave me something called the crown ability. This used the red crown power to destroy my enemies in various ways. I practiced my new ability on these training dummies before I continued, then on to discover new things in the darkwood that could potentially help me on my quest. Like this necklace that I can give to one of my followers to boost its speed. I'm not sure how being faster is going to be helpful if they're just sitting there praying, but I imagine I could find some necklaces that are actually useful. And then I ran into Fornius, a trader who was selling various things for gold. A tarot card, some blueprints for building, and then this commandment stone fragment. Since that's what I needed for my quest, that's what I grabbed. But not much later, a room full of them. Thanks to this bird-like creature named Haro, speaking in riddles I didn't understand him at all, but what did I care? I got all the fragments that I needed. Then before entering the final section, I was gifted a nice little upgrade to my crown ability, the Flaming Shot 2. I faced off against Valifar. Despite not being a fan of big slow weapons, this heavy axe did massive damage. That, combined with my curse ability, made Valifar a pretty easy fight. I slaughtered him and then saved his soul and returned back to my cult to indoctrinate him. When I got back, it was nighttime, and since everyone was sleeping on the ground, it was probably time to get them some sleeping bags. But they weren't just sleeping on the ground. They were perfectly content sleeping right next to this pile of dookie. Uh, you guys, this is unacceptable. What are y'all doing? And you're sleeping right next to it. Oh, my dog doesn't do this. Come on, guys. I suppose getting them a bathroom might help the situation, but I still had a bit to go before I could unlock that. So for now, I had to clean it up with my trusty broom. And if I don't do it quickly, they will get sick from it, naturally. In the AM, I had Tyjul ask me for a favor. These dang followers are already getting a bit too needy for my liking. Hopefully, there's a way to show them some obedience in the future. He wanted me to name my cult. I couldn't think of any good puns, so I just kept the default. Cult of the Lamb. Back in the temple, I was able to declare my first doctrine, the Bonfire Ritual. This unlocked a ritual that I could perform to massively boost my faith at a cost of wood and some bones of my enemies. Wood I had. Bones of my enemies? Not so much, so I'd have to crusade before I could perform the ritual. Back into Darkwood with a new random set of weapons, this time something much more my speed, literally, and also a cool new curse ability. I sliced and diced my way through the Darkwood. I freed and converted another follower discovered a weird bird-like creature named Kudai who gave me a chance to change my weaponry, and then I faced off against the pundit of the old faith, Barbados. This guy was a bit more challenging than the last. He had some different moves that I had to take a second to get used to, 
His spikes were doing some good damage, and he almost got me because of my impatience. But thanks to my homing missile curse ability, I finished him off safely from a distance. Barbados emerged from his cocoon and I converted him before grabbing my reward. Wooden planks. Oh, lucky me, I got some wooden planks. That's exactly what I wanted. The one who waits spoke to me again to remind me that my followers are meant to be bent to my will. Yep, he wants me to take advantage of them. So he gave me the power to read their minds. I got back and it was nighttime again. Thankfully, no dookie this time. But they were all hungry and still sleeping on the floor. First, I upgraded my shrine so more of them could pray. They all seemed pretty happy about that. And then Tyjul voiced his complaint about sleeping on the ground. So I finally decided to craft some beds. I'm just getting started. I don't need followers leaving my cult already, so I should probably try to make them happy. I indoctrinated my two new members and put them to work praying. I performed my first ritual in the temple to restore my cult's faith and held a bonfire. Not sure how seeing someone bleed from the eyes brings comfort, but everyone seemed quite happy about it. Now that I had a full commandment stone, I was able to declare a new doctrine in the temple. You can declare four for each of the categories. I didn't know what they'd be or where to start, but resources were already a bit annoying, so I figured I'd see what the possessions doctrine offered. I had the choice between being able to extort my followers and collect coin from them daily, or give them coin to increase their loyalty. I don't have coin to give them. I need coin, so it wasn't much of a choice. I was gonna learn to extort them. Hooray! Ratu showed up again to teach me how to truly take everything from my followers. Basically, make them super loyal, and they will give me literally everything they own, including their soul. This is great. But I can do this by giving them gifts, completing quests for them, and performing blessings. And as they level up, they become more and more vessels of my desire. Ratu went back to his lonely shack, but told me to come visit sometime. I blessed my followers, and I gave them some gifts, like the necklace that I found earlier. I upgraded some things at my base, and then I made a trip to Ratu's lonely shack. He must be really lonely, because he forced me to play this dice game, Knucklebones, which he seems to be obsessed with. Not gonna lie though, it was low-key kind of fun. You roll a dice, slot it in where you want, doubles, double your points, and then the same dice cancel it out on your opponent's side. The one with the most points, when all the slots are filled, wins. Easy enough. It's mostly luck, but there is a small bit of skill. And as much as I enjoyed it, I only played until I beat him once, because I had a cult to grow. I leveled up again after another sermon, which unlocked the next tier and gave me better starting weapons. Then my follower, Hetra, had a task for me. He reminded me that when times are tough, I could make a simple meal. Even if they won't like it, it's better than nothing. But I didn't have nothing. I could have cooked a better meal for him, but to satisfy his weird desire, and let me assure you there is much weirder requests to come, I went ahead and I cooked him a bowl of grass, and he was pretty happy about it. It has a 25% chance of causing illness and a loss of five faith. Not ideal. Food is not that hard to get, so I don't think I'll ever be this desperate, but who knows. I added an offering statue to my base, a place where followers can periodically drop random offerings to me. This was in addition to being able to force them to give me gold. I'm really starting to learn how to take everything from my followers just as Ratu instructed me. Do I feel bad about it? No, I do not. On my next crusade, even with some pretty nice weaponry and abilities, I was finally slain, or martyred. But I'm kinda already dead, so the one who waits sent me right back up into the world of the living. But it was an eye-opener. I thought I could just blindly slash and dodge my way through everything, but now I might need to actually pay attention, because it's a little tougher than I thought. My next run, I encountered another new opportunity, but instead of weapons or tarot cards, it was an opportunity to buy a follower. Yep. Now we're buying people. This spider guy, Halab, was having a sale. I didn't care so much about saving his life as I did about getting a bargain. 54% off? I can't say no to that. So I bought him and I sent him back to be indoctrinated. I encountered the fisherman who was weirdly paranoid about me stealing his fish. But it's all good. He was friendly and he told me to come visit him sometime at the best fishing spot around. I got to the end of the crusade and was forced into a confrontation with Leshy. I was not expecting this, but apparently after three runs, you will unlock the boss, and I definitely wasn't ready for it, but I was here, so I gave it a shot. 
He transformed into this hideous beast. I mean, he was already ugly, but what the hell is this thing? Just like before, it took me just a short amount of time to familiarize myself with his moves. It was nothing I hadn't seen. Many of the monsters I encountered on my crusades had all the same move sets, so I was pretty familiar. The one move that tripped me up was the one where these spikes pop out when he goes underground. But with plenty of hearts and level 5 weaponry, I was able to conquer Leshy my first time through. It gave me a heart of a heretic. That would unlock new things for me, and a couple other rewards. The one who waits was impressed, and so were my followers. Back home, I did the routine, collecting my divine inspiration and performing my sermon. I got a new level and unlocked an increase in my fervor, which is what powers my curse abilities. Those abilities are super helpful, so I'm definitely going to be focused on improving that. And then a new doctrine to make my followers gain faith when I build a better sleeping quarters. And finally at the temple, I used my new heart of a heretic to unlock another new ability. If I eat a meal before a crusade, I get an extra heart. My trees were all chopped down basically and they didn't grow back, at least not in a reasonable amount of time that I could notice. So I had to get myself a lumber yard set up where I can put my followers to work cutting wood. Then off to visit the fisherman. He had an assignment for me catch some rare fish. I don't know why I'm the one who has to do it. He is literally called the fisherman. But I gave it a few attempts and I realized that, well, this is just not going to happen anytime soon. Once again, I've got a cult to grow. I don't have time to sit back and relax and cast the line. We got murderous activities to be doing. So I went home and got back to it. Before going into the next doorway, I went back to Darkwood. One of my followers wanted me to find his friend. And since I needed more followers, I agreed. But the Darkwood was now more challenging now that Leshy was defeated. Thankfully, I got some upgraded weapons. I unlocked these Bane weapons which caused poison damage, a handy little bonus. After making my way through, the one who waits had something else for me. He told me to truly become powerful enough to defeat the other bishops. I would need to sacrifice my followers. He gave me the ability to perform that ritual. Back at home, my followers were growing and growing and they were actually starting to get a little too needy for my liking. They kept pooping everywhere, and they seemed constantly hungry, and somehow they keep breaking their beds. I don't know how you break a sleeping bag. Like, what are they doing in there? And because they were annoying me a little too much, I had to relieve that frustration by testing out my new ritual. I sacrificed Tidejewel, my first and most loyal. Oh, wow. I didn't know this was gonna be so violent. Where did those tentacles come from? Sorry, Tidejewel. Way to take one for the team, though. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, nice. We get more hearts. Perfect. I really need that. A lot of the newer buildings needed more advanced resources, so I put up a forge before heading back out on my crusades. I unlocked the next door into the land of Anura. More new weapons, which is always fun, but I still wish I could have some control over what I'm getting. I took these giant monster hands and smacked my way through all these demon frogs. Hecate, the next bishop, showed themselves to warn me of my blasphemy. As a punishment, they struck one of my followers with starvation. So I had to worry about that now. But first, I had to finish my crusade. I took down Gujan, the egg-laying frog beast, and saved another soul. The one who waits continues to be impressed and rewarded me with another way to help my quest. He gave me an offering chest, which I can use to convert resources into gold. But I had bigger priorities. Everyone was sick and hungry. I had lots of poop to clean up and vomit and feed these sickly followers and then send the ones who are sick to bed rest. I don't have a healing bay yet, so they had to heal up slowly in their beds while I cleaned up their poop and cooked them some food. But I did get another new ritual, the Ascend Follower Ritual. Basically, it's another way to sacrifice them, except this is the nice way to put it. They are ascending, not being sacrificed. The benefits are slightly different too. The sacrifice drops follower loyalty while giving you a boost. This one doesn't give me a boost, but it does boost all of my followers loyalty, which makes sense. No one wants to be sacrificed, but when you tell them they are ascending, of course they'd be happy about it. It's funny though, because in both situations, they are still dead. I came out of the temple and all was good. Faith was high, food was good, no one was sick. But out of nowhere, my followers started dying, and I had no idea why. Oh no, he died. Oh no, what? Another one's dying. What is going on? Why are they dying? What just happened there? 
Now what does he want? No. What? Shalamba. He's mad. My faith is shaken. I can see through your lies. You're a fraud. Dissenters. What is what is this? Okay, so they're mad because oh the faith is too low. Oh no. Uh oh. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix this. How do I falsehoods about you? Other followers may also be led astray, so I have to re-educate them or put them in prison. <laughs> oh, I didn't unlock that yet. Um, just sacrifice them. Or just sacrifice them. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so that's way easier instead of building a prison. Mm -hmm. But what? I don't even know how everyone just all of a sudden just started dying. What is happening here? I don't know how this just happened. Turns out I was feeding them deadly food, but I didn't catch on to that until later. For now, I was too focused on cleaning up the mess before everyone left my cult. Those dead bodies cause illnesses, so I had to get rid of them. I could either bury them or chop them up for some meat. Seeing as how I didn't have any graves unlocked and my followers were still always hungry, I chopped those bodies right up in front of everyone. And they did not like that. The faith was so low I had to perform a ritual. One of my followers, Hetra, was spreading lies. Instead of wasting time re-educating him, I just sacrificed, <clears throat> I mean ascended him. A big boost to my followers' faith and I rid of the plague growing inside my cult. Two birds with one stone. I went back out to cook some more food and just as I was about to load out another 12 dishes, I realized the name of the dish I was making. It's literally called Deadly Dish. So it all makes sense now. After so many deaths, I was down to just four followers. So I went back to Darkwood to see if I could find some more. I approached another helpful stranger named Kemek who gave me new abilities. I unlocked these things called relics, which I can find on my crusades and use them for their powerful abilities. To help solve my lack of food, I got into a bit of farming. I made up some crop plots and started growing some berries and just in time because one of my followers begged me to recruit some starving followers. But the crops take time to grow and I needed to feed them now. So I spoke too soon last time. I am already in desperate need for food. I cooked up those bowls of grass even with the 25% chance of them getting sick. I even ate one myself to test it out and yeah, it's bad. Sure enough, it made a bunch of my followers ill, but I couldn't make the medicine hut yet because I didn't have enough resources. I didn't even have enough beds, so I crafted some and sent the sicklings to bed rest. And then I went on a crusade to gather more resources. I ran into new faces, the menticide mushroom people who told me about a place I need to visit in Spore Grotto. They were peaceful, but I slaughtered them anyways because I needed food and they dropped mushrooms. When I faced off against Elagos, it was the first time I really got to use one of those relics. And this one in particular was awesome. It froze time. Definitely want to seek more of these out because this is really handy. Back at home, after all those grassy bowls, there was a ton of poop to clean up, which was actually a good thing this time because poop is fertilizer and I needed it for my crops. I had a new doctrine to declare. This was super well timed because I was struggling with food so much. It gave me the option to perform a ritual at my temple to declare a fast where followers won't eat or be hungry for three days. This sounded incredible. No managing food for three whole days? Sign me up. But after taking way too long to decide, I actually went with the other one, a feasting ritual where it can fill up their hunger and gain plus 25 faith. I figured this one would be better. I could use it for emergencies. If everyone all of a sudden starts feeling hungry again, I could quickly boost their hunger and their faith. Two of the three things that I needed to manage. Then I hosted my first feast. And with all these full bellies, there were sure to be more pooping. So I put up an outhouse so I don't have to worry about them getting sick from their own dookie. I went to meet this Sozo character at the Spore Grotto. He said he had something for me, but first I needed to get him shrooms. And he really didn't want anything to do with me unless I had them. I went back to the fishing place and on the dock was some mysterious beast in the water. I approached. He had something for me. It was a piece to this item I was collecting. I honestly don't know when or where I got the first piece from or what it even does. But I have two now, so we'll see what happens when I get all four. Back home I farmed my crops and collected my pumpkins. I didn't know how to automate this farm quite yet, so I just did it myself. It's not all that time consuming. And then one of my followers approached me with the most disgusting thing ever. You judge me, but I've always wanted to eat a meal made of poop. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I have problems with this for a lot of reasons. Firstly, it's disgusting. But also, I didn't want to have to lose 25 faith. He was probably going to get sick and probably die from it. If I was going to be losing a follower, I'm going to do it by sacrifice. So before I complied with this absolutely disgusting request, 
I put up a healing bay where they can get better almost immediately versus the couple days of bed rest. Then I discovered I can just buy seeds for my farm. So I did that, and while over there I purchased another poor soul about to be eaten by this spider guy. On my crusade to get a few more resources, I ran into another new face. This gold hoarding tree let me make an offering of gold for random resources. He had a bunch of gold laying around, so I collected it. But don't be fooled, that is his gold. And he knew that I stole it, so no offerings for me. Which is fine, because he gave me crap anyways. Then Heket showed himself to punish me for my efforts. He cast a famine upon my cult. Now everyone is starving. But I had to finish my crusade before I could deal with them. My feasting ritual was still on cooldown, so I couldn't instantly boost their hunger. But because the faith was dropping, and because I had no intention of feeding someone poop, I sacri- <clears throat> I mean ascended Thornatra, the poop lover. He dropped some meat, which I can use to feed the others, but mostly I had to make these berry bowls. In what I once thought of as a negative, having a 15% chance of pooping instantly was now highly desired. I needed that poop for fertilizer, so cooking up these berry bowls was actually perfect. One of my followers reached an elderly age, which basically meant he was useless now. He could still attend sermons and help me level up, but he wasn't going to be doing any work now. Just taking up space and being hungry and being worthless. I feel a sacrifice, <clears throat> I mean ascendant, coming on soon. I brought the mushrooms to Sozo and he gave me a new ritual to perform, brainwashing. I can lock in place my faith for two days, which seems really helpful. But he did hint at some side effects, like everyone feeling sick afterwards, so I'm a little hesitant to use this one. I built my little barn so that farming process could be more automated. This would allow followers to water the crops themselves. And with this seed box, I can store seeds and they will plant themselves as well. I had some decorations to install to make one of my followers happy, and because I didn't really care, I just slapped them together in the corner so that he would just be quiet. Then I finished my farm with the fertilizer bin so they can now auto-fertilize. The only thing they can't do yet is harvest, but I'd need farm level 2 to do that. Next up, I built my missionary and tabernacle. The missionary allows me to send my followers on their own crusades, with a percentage chance of gathering resources. The tabernacle is just another place to gather more devotion. While my followers headed to bed, I went on another crusade. I needed camellia flowers for the healing bay to heal my followers, but also Majulan was requesting I find someone. After I defeated the witness who gave me a new item, the Eye of the Witness, I saw that I could essentially continue on forever, getting better and better rewards each time. But I needed something called the Omnipresence Crown ability if I wanted to be able to leave at any time, otherwise it would be a full commitment. So I didn't go down that path yet, but it's good to know I can really test my skills after taking down the bishop in each land. I had a ton of berries to pick, and while I was doing so, Old Man Barbados died. These followers can witness tentacles coming out of the ground to murder someone and be all cheery, but when someone dies of natural causes from old age, they vomit uncontrollably. I had to clean up their mess and deal with this dead body. My faith was high enough, so I just butchered it for meat because I still didn't have graves unlocked. Then it was time to send Amdujis on a crusade. I sent him off to collect some meat. With only 86% chance of death, I felt like it was a good percentage. I'll take that risk. Or rather, I'll force him to take that risk. And then not long after, another request from my follower. But this request I was much more willing to comply with. He wanted to be sacrificed. You got it, buddy. Some of my followers are a little more uneasy about sacrifices because of this against sacrifice trait they have. So I was going to need to be careful how much I do it, or just sacrifice anyone with that trait. That works too. A new day meant a new sermon and a new doctrine. This time I chose one that helps the mass depression when someone dies. I had a lot of followers getting old too quickly and dropping dead while I was on crusades. Back out on a crusade, I came across yet another new face, Flinky. He too was obsessed with that knuckle bones game and challenged me. I made my way to Heket the bishop and attempted to take down bishop number two. I had a big, slow, heavy axe as my weapon, which is not my preference. I like speed and quickness, but I won't blame RNG for my defeat, even though I kind of am. It was his moves. That jump does huge AoE, and his tongue attack was super fast, so he got the best of me. Before going back, I had a lot going on at camp. New requests from my followers, dealing with a dissenter, collecting my tributes, and greeting Amdujus as he returned from his quest successfully and brought me some meat. 
This time I made my way through pretty flawlessly, and between the tarot cards and getting lucky with finding hearts, I was stacked with a ton of hearts going into this fight. I pretty much just tanked my way through it and slashed as fast as I could before he could bring me down, and I didn't even need to use the time stop. I collected my heart and returned to my loyal followers. After another daily sermon and checking in with everyone, it was time to unlock the next portal to Anchor Deep. I made my crusade facing off against even tougher enemies. I struggled against Salios and I felt like I needed to power up a bit more before pushing on. So first I got upgraded to Cult 3 to collect more devotion even faster. There are these little spider critters running around at night time and while I was picking some berries I caught one. But instead of just giving me the morsel like it has usually, this one weirdly turned into a skull. I didn't know what to do with it but it didn't disappear so I left it there for now. Then I picked up some really strange poops. Got some more colorful poop over here. I still have no idea what that stuff does. Devoted fertilizer, interesting. Oh, oh my god. This is hilarious. Oh no. And I went back to Pilgrim's Passage just because I was looking for more quests to check off the list. I figured that'd be a good way to keep leveling up to get more powerful to make those anchor deep runs a bit easier. I caught one of his rare fish and gave it to the fisherman, and he gave me the final piece to this talisman. Again, no idea how I got the first and now the third one, but here I am with all four. Apparently it unlocks new fleeces, which are not just cosmetic, they have actual abilities. After getting leveled up from my followers and unlocking more fervor, I used the talisman to unlock a new fleece. All of the fleeces seem to have a downside. Deal double damage and cost half the fervor, but melee weapons and health are halved. None of that sounded good to me. I wanted to get stronger, not just shift my abilities, but one fleece did seem to only have a positive, at least as far as I could tell. I don't think I've had a total of four tarot cards on a single run yet, so the fact that I can get four right at the beginning seemed like a positive. It's not like these cards have negative effects, I'm pretty sure they are only good. So I didn't really get how these ones could have a downside. So I selected and equipped that one. Then a new doctrine to further exploit my followers and get more gold. I made another crusade into Anchor Deep, but it was still a struggle. I made it to Salios with just a heart and a half, and was pretty sure I was going to be defeated again. But this time I had a weapon that fits my style, and even more importantly, my favorite curse ability equipped. The Divine Guardian, which provides two seconds of invincibility and deflects projectiles. It's pretty OP in my opinion. Without that, I definitely would have lost. I got back and I did the normal upkeep for my followers before heading right back out into another crusade in Anchor Deep. Once again, the bishop tried to stop me, this time by casting a plague on my followers. Now all of them were sick and going to die if I didn't take care of them ASAP. So I had to hurry up and finish the crusade and get back to my sicklings. I was able to heal a couple in the healing bay, but I didn't have enough flour, so most of them got bed rest. Then, a new doctrine. I could now bring followers back to life, and that was fantastic. Made me care a little less if they die, which kept happening. Elagos returned from his quest and died, but apparently not until he already made it back. A few of my followers have a trait that affects overall faith when someone dies, so I couldn't keep butchering them for their meat because that also lowers the faith. So I started getting a pile up of dead bodies because I couldn't keep up my faith. And I still hadn't unlocked the graves. So I tried leveling up first so that I could take care of my sanitation issue. I forgot I had a doctrine that boosted my faith every time I built something. So I should have just built a bunch of graves earlier or any cheap structure to keep that faith up. Since I could carry the skull of that spider, I thought maybe I could bury it too. And sure enough, I could. And when I did, I got myself a new spider friend and unlocked penitence mode? No idea what it was, but that was a really cool random discovery that I found. With all these deaths, I decided to finally try the brainwashing ritual to lock their faith in place. I gotta say it's really nice not having to worry about what they think of me. I let Sozo know I used his recipe and he was pleased enough to reward me with a new talisman piece. Then another crusade through Anchor Deep, and yet another new face, who showed me the way to his trading post, Smuggler's Sanctuary. I headed there after a successful crusade and I found out that's where I can trade the eyes of the witness and receive a piece of the talisman in return. I was still doing the dirty work of harvesting my crops myself. I needed to upgrade so I could have my followers do it for me, but I needed more resources for that and other things. I needed silk, which I hadn't even come across yet. But the fourth realm was called Silk's Cradle, so I can only imagine there would be some silk there. 
I opened the portal and went on in. Once again, these bishops continued to try to stop me by turning my followers against me. This time, they literally made me fight one, and I had to murder my own follower, which did a lot of bad will to my cult. It made Poppy leave, and apparently he was taking gold with him. I wasn't about to let that happen, so as soon as I got back from my successful quest, he was getting sac- <clears throat> I mean, ascended. I also got my farmer station 2 set up now. My followers can harvest for me. And to fully get everything set up, I added a compost bin. Because after I stopped feeding them those berry bowls, no one seems to poop anymore, and I needed fertilizer. Another crusade meant I was ready for the bishop. But Calamar was by far the hardest challenge yet. I seriously struggled with these tiny yellow balls, and I didn't understand his moveset at all. On top of it, these annoying jumping spiders make things harder. Oh yeah, and I try not to blame the weapons, but seriously, this hammer is just too slow for me. And yes, I'm blaming the weapon. I was martyred. I didn't feel it was close either. It was a struggle. So I looked into more ways to become more powerful. I upgraded my cult to the final stage, then looked into some of the other buildings. I put up this demonic summoning circle, which apparently allowed me to convert my followers into demons who could come on the crusades with me. Having them help seemed like a good way to make things easier, so I built it. Then I turned Poppy. Then I turned Poppy, the good one who didn't try to leave my cult, into a demon who gave me half a spirit heart for my next crusade. I made my way through another crusade to face off against Calamar once again, but I took some licks on the crusade and only had three and a half hearts going in. I did not feel good about that. Also, I used a relic that made me a tiny little lamb. And I don't know if it was intended to be a good or bad thing, but it was definitely bad. Very, very bad. It made it so hard to see my little lamb character rolling around and really hard to dodge things. A smaller hitbox in this case was not at all helpful. And I kept getting confused with my little ghost demon follower trailing me everywhere. I was about the same size and looked too similar. So in other words, no chance this time. After another round of chores with my followers on the next crusade, I turned Aaron into a demon. This time I could get better health drops. Since the half heart at the beginning wasn't at all helpful, I kept taking hits so I needed more hearts overall. But failed again. I still really struggled with these yellow blasts. I just took three hits in a row right there that ended me real quickly. So after a couple more failed attempts, I needed to try something new. The demon followers were actually helping a little, so I focused on upgrading the demonic summoning circle to level 3, where I could now summon 3 at a time. I ended up going into Silk's Cradle for a crusade before going back to Anchor Deep. I needed to feel successful after so many failed attempts. I safely made it through and continued working towards getting a little stronger. I got back to taking care of my followers and making sure they were giving me as much devotion and experience as possible so that I could keep improving my base and my character. I leveled up the Might of the Devout for better starting weapons and unlocked as many of the specialty weapons and all the curses available that I could. I had another new friendly face to visit in the lands, Midas. Another place to make some purchases, but this guy dealt in gold and was way too rich for my taste. I don't think I've ever had more than 10 gold bars at one single point in time. This guy is trying to get me to make an offering for that much. No thank you. I converted Anon into a demon to help with melee attacks. Belzebub to automatically collect a fervor, and Weber, who flies away and returns with hearts. Then I set off into Anchor D once more. I was so incredibly focused on just trying to make it to Calamar with as many hearts as possible. I wasn't going to be mastering his moves, so I needed as much tankiness as possible. And thanks to my demon followers, they helped me with my best start yet. Eight and a half hearts. I had a big slow hammer, which is not my preference, but it still did massive damage. I needed to be patient anyways, so this could actually benefit me. And the curse ability I had essentially acted as a shield to those yellow balls because it would destroy them when I activated it. I took my time and I was very, very patient with those stupid yellow balls. And when I saw my window, I went in for my attacks. Tanking hits, knowing that I could take a few, I smashed his face in as fast as possible and ultimately came away victorious. I noticed afterwards I had four of those little demons, not three. The summoning circle only gave me three, but somewhere along my crusade, another one popped into play. I have no idea how this happened, but I'm glad it did because I'm sure it helped me win that fight. 
The new heart I had I used to unlock the resurrection. Sacrifice a follower and be resurrected? Probably would have been helpful to have this before that last bishop. Literally an extra life, so I wouldn't have had to do the whole crusade over and over when trying to defeat Calamar. Oh well, I have it now. One of my followers really wanted to get married. I didn't know that was a thing, but I just had to see what that was all about, so I agreed. After the wedding, I unlocked something new. I now could harvest and use my followers' sins. I unlocked a new set of buildings to construct and a whole new way to use and abuse my followers. I can use sin to make improvements to my temple, but beyond that, I'm not entirely sure what it's used for. It's kind of a weird thing to have unlocked this late when I'm so close to my final crusade. I'm wondering if this was added post launch. Anyway, I didn't put too much time into exploring the sins of my followers, only because I was so close on reaching the final bishop. But I did, however, perform one of the sinful rituals to see what it was all about. Naturally, I performed Rite of Lust, a naked dance party. Little did I know this went on for literal days. <laughs> they were really into it. But some of the other sinful things I could get into are some drunken good times and, well, sex, mating, having babies. On the next crusade, I was presented another new weapon I hadn't used yet, the blunderbuss. It was powerful, but I really, really did not like this thing. Even the big slow axe is better because this thing has an ammo counter, and it's really slow when you run out of ammo to reload. I struggled my way through this crusade, but made it to the end and defeated the final heretic before getting to face off against the bishop. I wanted to make sure to be fully leveled, so I unlocked Might of the Devout Five for the best starting weapons. I went into the crusade without my demons. I honestly just forgot to bring them, but this crusade felt easier than the last, so that's probably why. I got to Shimura and faced off against the final bishop. This was much easier than the last one. Mostly for me because there was none of those tiny yellow balls. The only thing I had to look out for was this quick jump attack. But even that seemed to have smaller AoE than the toad I took down earlier. So overall, pretty easy. I collected my heart and was brought back to the one who waits. He congratulated me for my success, but reminded me the crown is his and his alone. The time has come for me to give it up and return to, I think, being dead? Probably? That didn't sound very good to me. Sounds like I might have one last fight if I want to stay alive and keep this power, and you better believe I do. But before I could do that, I needed 20 followers, and I only had 15, because they kept dying off or leaving. So I had the task of finding five more. I went on a quest and took the path that led to another follower being saved, but died in the end, so I only got one. That creepy spider guy didn't have anyone for sale, so I couldn't get it from him. Then another died from old age, and I was seemingly losing followers faster than I could get them. Then I remembered that I have a resurrection ritual. I performed and brought one back to life to bring me up to 19. Then just one more successful crusade through Anura, and I had my 20 followers. I entered the gateway, performed the ritual, and unlocked the portal to the underworld. There I was presented with a plethora of weapon choices. It's always only been one weapon and one curse, but now three of each. None of these, though, were my preferred choices, such as my luck. I cautiously approached the one who waits. Vessel, I relinquish you from your service to the Red Crown. Return it to me and embrace the end that awaits. With this last sacrifice of my most devoted follower, I will be freed. Finally, I will be free. Approach, Vessel, and lay your life down at my feet. Oh no, he's got my followers. Don't worry, guys. I'll save you. Kneel to be sacrificed. I'm right back where I started. This is this was my choice in the beginning, wasn't it? Well, we're obviously gonna refuse. I don't know what happens if you accept, but I was not about to find out. He sent his guards after me first, but they were pretty weak and slow. I had no troubles with them. The one who waits took me on. He had some good moves, and my mortal enemies, those little tiny yellow balls, but he was more predictable. I took him down in his first phase. Then on to phase two, I struggled once again with those damn balls, and he did end up getting the best of me. I didn't even know how close I was, if there was another round or another phase or not, but I was pretty much leveled up as much as I could be, so the only thing to do was go right back in for round two. I forgot about my demon followers though, this time I converted one and brought him along. I only used the increase in fervor demon because it felt like the only one who really gave me a huge benefit. At the start, I got a much better starting draw for curses and I picked the Divine Blast, which helps me defend myself against my mortal enemies, those little tiny yellow balls. 
Once again, I pretty easily made my way through the first phase, then on to phase two. I took some hits, but I was much more patient, trying to avoid those yellow balls at every turn and going in for the attack only when it was clear. I got him down to the final hit, and I laid down my hammer upon his ugly face to take him down once and for all. He broke from his demon form, and I had the choice of sparing him or murdering him. I'm not a murderer, despite all the events that had just occurred, but does that really make me a good person for sparing him? Because my intentions were to bring him to my cult, bend him to my will, and take everything from him. One could argue, that's worse than murder. Anyways, my followers were pretty happy about our triumph, and I was now free to do as I please. Lead this cult in whatever direction I choose. Use my followers at my own desire and for my own personal gain. I was now a little lamb god. Kwamala Nam.